Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdale here. In this presentation, I'm going to discuss a very basic inequality known as the Peter Paul inequality. And I'll do three things. First of all, I'll show you the inequality. Secondly, I'll give an outline of how the inequality is useful. And thirdly, I'll talk about a little bit of history and how the, the, the Peter Paul inequality got its name. Now, one of the motivations behind this particular uh, presentation is that some recent research between myself and my PhD student involved an application of the Peter Paul inequality. But don't let that scare you off. The, uh, the level of this presentation is very elementary. And in fact, uh, a high school student should be able to follow pretty much all of this presentation. So, what is the Peter Paul inequality? For all real numbers, A and B, and for all positive numbers, epsilon, we have the following inequality holding. 2AB is less than or equal to A squared on epsilon plus epsilon times B squared. Now, first of all, before we uh, uh, show how this inequality comes about, let's try to deconstruct the inequality. Okay, what we're doing is we're essentially estimating the product, 2 times A times B, in terms of this right-hand side. Now, the right-hand side is sometimes um, called something big plus something small. Okay, so epsilon here, let's say epsilon is, is something that, that you choose to be small. Okay, if epsilon's small, then this term will be small because it's epsilon times b squared. This term here will be large because we'll be dividing by a small value of epsilon. So that's your large bit, that's your small bit. Okay, on the other hand, if epsilon is chosen to be large, then this will be large and this will be small. So something big plus something small. Okay, now... There, I guess I'm going to sort of go down two tracks with um, how inequality one arises. But before we get to that, let's motivate the, um, the inequality even more. Inequality one is very useful in the analysis of solutions to partial differential equations and ordinary differential equations. Okay, PDE and ODE. And in fact, as I said earlier, this inequality has been applied by myself and my PhD student to some recent research where we're looking at uh, analysing um, the geometric characteristics of solutions to certain ordinary differential equations and associated boundary value problems. Now, if you want to see an application of this straight away, um, you can have a look at, for example, PDE book by Evans where he um, uh, applies this inequality, the Peter Paul inequality, to uh, solutions of PDEs. Okay, so let's talk about how um, one comes about. Well, this is a standard well-known inequality, and in fact one is equivalent to that inequality. Um, to prove this is very easy, you just essentially uh, take this to the other side and then you factorise and you're, you've got the square of something which is always non-negative. Now, if I take if we let say capital A be little a on root epsilon let capital B be uh, root epsilon times little b then this expression becomes okay so on the left hand side you're going to get 2 times that times that so the root epsilons will cancel out okay less than or equal to the square of that plus the square of that. Okay, so you can cancel off these 
and you get the following. Okay, alternatively you can even do it in a you know, even more direct way without using this. Just take this to the other side, factor and uh, you'll get it that way. Okay, so I can, fa I can factor this Okay, so this is just the following. Okay, here I've got the square of something, so that is always non-negative. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that that's uh, how how the Peter-Paul inequality can arise. Okay, now in practice, um, the you're estimating the product of you know, two, I guess, two AB in terms of these things, and um, in what Evans has, has done, and what myself and my PhD student have done, is choose epsilon to be some convenient um, value for um, the calculations involved. Now, uh, when the research is published, the, the, the joint research that myself and my PhD student are doing, I'll put a link to the, the research paper so you can see exactly what we've done with that particular Peter-Paul inequality. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the name now, the name of the Peter-Paul inequality. Well, the name arises out of the following observation. If you wish to gain control of one of the terms on the right hand side of one, then you lose control of the other term. So for example, suppose you wanted to control this term. You could control this term by taking epsilon to be small, okay, because that will give you something small then. But this term, you can't control that if epsilon is small because you're dividing by a small number, so this will be large. So in order con to control this term, you lose control of this term. Okay, similarly, if you want to control this term, you choose epsilon to be large. But if you choose epsilon to be large, this term will blow up. You'll lose control of that term. So there, there's, you know, if you want to control one term, you give up control of the other term. And this, this leads nicely into the reason behind the name Peter Paul. Now, there is an ancient expression. You can give to Paul if you take from Peter. Okay, or perhaps another shortened or more popular version is rob Peter to pay Paul. Okay, if you want to satisfy one thing, you have to give up on another thing. Okay, a modern content, uh, modern, I guess, interpretation of this is suppose you have two bills to pay and you only have enough money to pay one bill. Well, you have to decide which company or which bill you're going to pay and which company or bill you're not going to pay. So, in other words, in order to pay one company, you're not paying the other. Okay, you're sort of robbing from one company to give to the other. Okay. Now, um, even though this, this kind of gives the impression that uh, the inequality may not be useful because you know what, what you gain on one term you lose on the other. This isn't the case. The inequality is very useful in the analysis of PDE and ODE. Now um, like I said this is an ancient expression. Something that um, I've been thinking about is perhaps a, a suggestion for a rewording of the Peter Paul inequality or renaming of it. And I've come up with the following. Swings and roundabouts. I'd like to call it the swings and roundabouts inequality. Okay. 
And uh, this is based on the English expression, it's all swings and roundabouts, which describes a situation where there are advantages and disadvantages in equal measures. Okay, what you gain on the swings, you lose on the roundabout. And this can be thought of going back to the Peter Paul inequality with controlling one term but losing control on the other term. Okay, so that's just a little suggestion, a little something that I had in my head. I think swings and roundabouts inequality is a little bit more fun um, and a little bit more modern than, uh, than the Peter Paul inequality, but um, it's just a suggestion. Okay, so that's the presentation uh, for this video. I'll keep you posted when the research between myself and my PhD student is published, and I'll post a link to the uh, research paper um, where we show exactly how we apply this Peter-Paul inequality. Thanks for watching, and I hope you can join me soon.